Ani Bosho. I'm Catherine Knott, Anishinaabe Quam from Proof Lake First Nation, part of the great Michisaga Nation. I've had the opportunity to, over the last five years to spend time with students from McMaster University as part of the Elder in Residence program. I'm hoping to be able to share a bit of information with you today that will support you in your academic career, and in life in general. The Anishinaabe way of thinking or being before colonialism was one that was very holistic, but was simple in a complex way. The Anishinaabe language relates all things to the creator, whether it's the trees, the plants, the four-leggeds, the winged ones, the water, and Mother Earth. It's important that we acknowledge these gifts for a balanced life, that we take what we need, that we don't overuse, that we in fact support the living and acknowledge each of them. In order to find balance in my life, I find it, in, it useful to be able to take the opportunity to find a peaceful spot where I can hear the water, hear the wind, and take a deep breath of clean, fresh air. As we reflect on these gifts and really take the time to be part of the creation, I find it very peaceful. And through the peace and the balance, that taking the time in nature provides, gives strength and allows us to move forward in a positive way. Appreciate the time that you will take to listen to these words. I hope that they have given you a bit of insight and chumigwach for listening. Bama pi. Ani, bojo. Nagabesh Basinkwe, Dishnakaz. Mishkikan, Dodam. Chiwakodon, Dunjaba. Ojibwe, and Nishnabe Kwe, and Dao. Um, my spirit name is Water That Flows Woman. I'm from the Turtle Clan, and I come from Guli Bay, which is the eastern shores of Lake, Lake Superior. And um, I'm Ojibwe Kwe. I've been working with students for approximately 15 years, and I'm here today to talk about self-care. It's always good to reflect on our medicine wheel teachings. So taking care of yourself physically by having good meals, lots of rest, getting outdoors. You know, this is particularly important for us as Indigenous people because um, we, our relationship to Mother Earth that reciprocal relationship that we have to Mother Earth. You know, Mother Earth needs us like we need her. Spiritually, you know, visiting with elders and attending ceremonies or our gatherings, um, you know, a powwow, a sweat lodge ceremony. And with regards to your emotional health, you know, talk to somebody. It's always nice to stop in at the Indigenous Student Centre during this uh, time of change when we've really had to embrace technology, you've had more access to elders. So technology has been really good for us. You know, we haven't had to travel so we can attend more events or conferences and take in speakers that we would have never been able to get the chance to see. And for the elders ourselves, you know, uh, embracing the technology and being able to share in this fashion has uh, been, a, been a journey as well. I wasn't quite, quite comfortable uh, talking to the camera and uh, hopefully somebody out there is listening. You know, we've gotten over it and, you know, there were, had been discussions about, is this okay to share our teachings this way? And we've had to embrace that because we wouldn't want to leave anybody behind and we want everyone to experience the teachings um, in the way, in the best way that we can offer them. I've been giving uh, teachings um, online and virtually for the past couple of years and I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was um, walking my talk. 
you know, the fasting camps weren't um, operating. So I had to think of a way to, um, for myself to be connected to Mother Earth and to spend that time out on the earth um, for myself to become grounded and step away from technology and to really spend time with myself in creation. So this spring, I committed to doing my own fast, you know, to feed my spirit and, and take care of myself. So while I was there, you know, I could see the uh, spirit of the fire. It was a beautiful glow. Um, the waves were uh, lapping up against the rocks. You know, the wind going through the trees and up against me. I was feeling like I was being very cleansed. To, at the end of the fast, at the end of my the day that I had spent out there, I had gone without food and water for that time I was there. I started to sing a song. And as I was singing that last song, an orange globe or orb, we would say, or spirit, Manadu, showed itself on a cedar tree. And it looked like it was dancing while I was singing. And as I hit the last beat of that drum, it disappeared. Shortly after that, we started receiving messages about the 215, you know, the, the children of the former residential school uh, grave sites that they were uncovering. And that was a message to me that, oh, that's what that orange globe was about, letting me know that this was coming. When I returned to urban life, <laughs> I was um, very soft-hearted for myself, for others around me. I could feel that compassion I had for Mother Earth, the love that she has for me, and the love that I have for myself. This part of your journey in your life is so significant for where it'll take you in the future. The biggest part of your journey is the journey of identity, finding out who am I, who am I. Um, you know, if you're having struggles, talk to somebody about it because you, you're not alone. There are other people that are in the same place as you are. Chimiwech gzeminido kinegego e mijang minwa gudin gigishkak gizis giben abit. Chimiwech kimijang il saba madzawin wido kushnang jinama ang gwek chibamo sayang. Chimiwech gzeminido kimijang gigit sim nun miwech geben ojim nun Chimigwech, 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 Chimigwech. <laughs>